Right now at 11, an NBC10 Respond special report. Where's my money? The COVID-19 crisis has led to an economic crisis across America. You can see the numbers state by state there on your screen, totaling some 3.3 million unemployment claims and paying out more than $11.8 billion across our region, Pennsylvania, with the highest total so far. So many people have reached out to us and asked about unemployment benefits and stimulus money, both crucial to keeping food on the table and paying bills. And we know this is a crazy, stressful time. But it's also a time to try to be calm because you need to take action, especially when it comes to collecting unemployment. It's a process with strict requirements and calls for attention to detail. It all starts with filing. When you log on to a state's unemployment website and prepare to fill out the form, have this information ready. Your social security number, your employer's names and addresses for the last 18 months, pay stubs for the last 18 months, and a pen and paper to write down your username and password for the unemployment website. Once you submit this information, the waiting game begins. I'm, I'm nervous about it. Across Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware, folks like laid off truck driver Michael Beck are waiting weeks to see their payments process. Beck tells us he filed nearly seven weeks ago. I'm getting close to where I'm going to not be able to pay a bill or two. According to the National Employment Law Project, it can take up to three weeks to process a claim in normal times. With this historic increase in claims, states are overwhelmed. We know that there are some people who have yet to receive their benefits, and they are, they are frustrated, they are discouraged, but um, please know that we are doing all we can to get people the benefits they they need and they deserve. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware all tell NBC10 Responds they've brought on additional staff to process claims and respond to your calls and emails. But with this record number of claims, they're working against a backlog. All of the state departments of labor say emailing them is the best way to get in touch. Only send one email to avoid additional delays. Really aggravating or frustrating would probably be the best description of it. Um, because it's not like I'm the only person going through it. No, he is not. The states tell us an outdated operating system is partly to blame for delays. The system they're working with is 40 years old and not built to handle this volume of claims. They are working to make improvements. Jackie. Some of you have reached out saying there's confusion over unemployment eligibility. NBC10 response reporter Jaima Crespo found if you weren't eligible for unemployment before, you may be now. From the first day that I started, it was so awesome. Back in March, Natasha Adorno was just one month into her new job as a school security guard in Philadelphia when the pandemic forced schools to close. It was heartbreaking because I'm like, well, what am I going to do now? The mother of four says she applied for unemployment in Pennsylvania but was denied. Did they say why you were denied? Because I didn't have previous income because I haven't worked in 13 years. Each state sets its own unemployment guidelines, and that means some people who lost their job due to COVID-19 may not be eligible for unemployment. But now there's a program which extends that net. The Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, part of the CARES Act relief bill approved by Congress. So if you've avoided applying for unemployment insurance in the past because you think you're not eligible, think again. Michelle Evermore is with the National Employment Law Project. It's available to people who don't qualify for regular unemployment insurance, including people who are self-employed, independent contractors, and people who qualify for a number of COVID-related reasons. Evermore says you may also qualify if you're unable to work due to you or a family member has COVID, don't have anyone to take care of your child, your workplace was shut down, or became the breadwinner of the household. Anybody who gets any kind of unemployment insurance, even if it's just partial unemployment insurance because you're still working part time, you'll get an extra $600 a week. Um, and then for anybody who is on regular unemployment insurance but has exhausted that benefit since last July, um, you should still be able to get an additional 13 weeks of uh, extended regular unemployment insurance. To apply for the pandemic unemployment assistance, you first apply and be found ineligible for unemployment benefits in your state. For Adorno, getting this benefit will keep her afloat until she finds a new job or is rehired. It may not be at the present moment that you want it, but hopefully soon we should get some answers. Jaima Crespo, NBC10 responds. As you've seen, filing for unemployment can be a complex process.
Yeah, and making just one small mistake as you fill out your claim form could mean your payment is delayed or denied. NBC 10's Keith Jones has five tips to avoid hitting a dead end. We know this is a lot to digest, so we check with the Department of Labor in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware for the filer mistakes they're seeing the most and how you can avoid them. The fifth most common mistake, failing to file your certification. For regular unemployment, you must recertify every two weeks. For PUA, you must do this every week. Each program has its own website. That brings us to the fourth, accidentally creating a new claim instead of recertifying. Carefully read the instructions for recertification before starting the process. Number three on the list, answering certification questions incorrectly. These are questions dealing with your ability to work and wages collected. According to New Jersey's Department of Labor, tens of thousands of people per week are answering at least one question in a way that causes benefits to be pended until an agent can review. The second most common filer mistake, entering your banking information incorrectly. This will prevent the direct deposit from making its way to your account. Make sure you're double checking your bank account number and routing number before submitting your application. And the number one mistake filers are making, according to our states, they're incorrectly entering their nine-digit social security number. Make sure you read over the combination you've entered and verify it's correct. Keith Jones, NBC10 News. So those five mistakes and other issues might get you denied. Your next option is to appeal. NBC10 Stephen Fisher shows you how you can file an appeal and how long it might take to get a ruling. After getting laid off due to the coronavirus, Jacqueline Ahern filed for unemployment in Pennsylvania. I did eventually get a denial uh, six weeks later, in which I then sent an appeal. In Pennsylvania, an appeal must be filed within 15 days after getting denied. In New Jersey, it's within seven days. Delaware, 10 days. Pennsylvania and New Jersey offer websites that walk you through how you can make that appeal online. You can also submit the petition for appeal form through mail or fax. You'll need the date your unemployment was denied, social security number, phone number, information from your previous employer, and explain why you are appealing. We were laid off due to the coronavirus, so I know I'm eligible. It's just a matter of, you know, getting that going at this point. After you file your appeal, you should receive a confirmation email indicating it was received. Then wait to be notified by the Unemployment Compensation Referee's Office about a hearing. It's been four weeks since Ahern sent in her appeal. She still hasn't heard anything. It's just taking so much time. And I, I think what actually makes it worse is the, just the lack of communication within any time frame. So we reached out to the Pennsylvania Department of Labor. They say despite a historic number of unemployment claims, they do not have a backlog in appeals. They told us nearly half of all appeals received are decided within 45 days. Most are decided within 75 days, and all of Pennsylvania's hearings will be done by phone. So, you know, you're holding on to your phone for dear life thinking you don't want to miss that call. In Delaware, as of April 24th, the average wait time of pending appeal cases was 19 days, but the state says it could take up to 60 days. We also reached out to New Jersey. They did not tell us how many unemployment appeals have been made in New Jersey and how long people should expect that process to take. Reporting Stephen Fisher, NBC10 Response. All right, many of you may have specific questions about your unemployment claim. Reporter Harry Hairston breaks down where you can go for answers. We're getting many questions from viewers about how to file for unemployment and the best information we found is on your state's website. Folks in Pennsylvania, the unemployment compensation website includes links for regular unemployment and independent contractors. Now let's take a look at Delaware. One of the best features I found on Delaware's website was a link to the claimant's handbook. It answers all of your questions about how to apply. And for those of you who live in New Jersey, check this out. New Jersey Division of Unemployment Insurance website is where you'll find answers to your questions like how to apply online, by phone, certified benefits, and dependency benefits. Okay, folks, now get out a pen and pad because what we're going to do is give you the numbers to those websites we just told you about. Write down these numbers, and remember, when you do call, because there is such a heavy call volume, 
Mm, it might take a little bit to get through, but you can always contact us right here at NBC 10 Responds, and we will work hard for getting you the answers you want and keeping you informed. Harry Harrison, NBC 10 Responds. As businesses start to reopen and look to bring their workers back in, some of you may have questions or concerns about returning. Employees have a few options, and decisions are very personal. I spoke with an unemployment expert about this. Joining me now is Julia Simon Michelle, supervising attorney for the Unemployment Compensation Unit for Philadelphia Legal Assistance. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. We appreciate it. Happy to be here. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about unemployment these days. I know a lot of people are concerned because some of them have filed for unemployment because their businesses were not considered essential. They started to receive that unemployment, but now their company has received a small business loan, and 75% of that money should be doled out to those employees. What should they do at this point? Stop receiving unemployment? So this really depends on individual circumstances. Now there is an issue with unemployment that happens if you refuse to go back to work when work is offered to you. It's called refusal of suitable work. But the key there is suitable, right? So this again depends on individual circumstances. If your employer is simply putting you back on payroll and offering to pay you for the duration of the PPP loan, um, then you're gonna need to accept that um, and go back to work and receive pay for those eight weeks. And once that's over, if there's no more pay for you, you can reopen your claim for unemployment. If they are asking you to physically come back to work, that raises other questions, mostly safety and health issues in the workplace. If you are concerned about safety and health issues in the workplace, if you're high risk, if you live with someone who's high risk, or if you don't feel your employer is following the governor's orders or providing necessary protection or cleaning protocols or social distancing, you should contact your employer in writing and explain what your concerns are. If they do not appropriately respond to those concerns and make sure that you have um, all of the safety and health issues covered in the workplace, um, then you don't have to go back to work. It's really important that people are not forced back into circumstances where uh, they are in danger or their family is in danger, um, and the law recognizes that those situations you would have good cause uh, to not return to work. There are so many factors, and it all depends on each person's individual circumstances. It's very confusing. People are desperate. Thank you for helping sort it all out for us and, and assisting the people who need it. Thank you so much, Julia Simon Michelle. We appreciate your time with Philadelphia Legal Assistance. And you can watch the full interview on our free NBC10 app. And up next on this NBC10 Response Special Report is another round of stimulus money on the way. We're back in 90 seconds. Welcome back to this NBC10 Response Special Report. Where's my money? It was mid-April when stimulus checks started reaching Americans. Since then, millions of people across the country have received their payment, but some still have not. Tonight, NBC10 Stephen Fisher shares how to track your payment and a new way to get your questions answered. The quickest and best way to track your stimulus payment is to start here at the irs.gov website. Then select Get My Payment. This is where you can check your payment status. To do this, you may need your 2019 tax return, if filed, and your 2018 return. Once you have that info, select Get My Payment at the bottom of the screen. From here, it's simple. Enter your social security number, date of birth, address, zip code, and click continue. Once you do that, the next page will tell you when your stimulus check is expected to arrive either by mail or when it will be deposited into your account. Or if you have already received your deposit, it will tell you which day you received your payment. You will also receive a letter 15 days later confirming how your payment was delivered. And if you are having issues with this IRS website and have further questions, starting Monday, you can now call and speak to a representative over the phone. Welcome to the Internal Revenue Service. The IRS added 3,500 employees to answer your questions about economic impact payments. They say most answers to common questions about stimulus payments can be located on the IRS.gov website. They encourage you to search there before calling. The phone number is one 800 919 9835. You have reached the 
economic impact payment. If your question is still unanswered after listening to the message, you will then be connected to a representative, but there will likely be a waiting period. Reporting Stephen Fisher, NBC10 Response. This week, the Treasury Department announced it will send nearly 4 million Americans their economic impact payment via prepaid debit card. You may receive one of these cards if you qualify for a payment but don't have your bank information on file with the IRS. We've heard from a number of NBC10 viewers who say they received their economic relief payment, but they believe the amount is wrong. Here's Harry Harrison again with what you can do. Many of you have been reaching out to NBC to response about your economic impact payment from the IRS. Hey, listen, folks are asking me why they didn't receive the money they think they deserve. Well, we have the answer for you. We have found the answer on the IRS economic impact payment page. It says if you did not receive the full amount to which you believe you are entitled, you will be able to claim the additional amount when you file your 2020 tax return. This is particularly important if you are owed more for any child that qualified for the $500 payments. You will need to save the letter the IRS sends to you a few weeks after you receive the payment. It's called a notice 1444. You should reference that on your 2020 tax return. Harry Harrison, NBC10 Response. Even after receiving stimulus money, families continue to struggle. For some, those funds are long gone, but a new relief plan could make another round of payments available. Jay McCrespo tells us more. We were able to go ahead and, you know, maintain our bills. Uh, Melinda Caraballo says the bulk of the $3,400 in stimulus money her family got as part of the CARES Act was spent paying living expenses and buying supplies for her children. We can't do any extracurricular activities because of COVID, uh, so ordering additional art supplies to keep them entertained, uh, trying to figure out new new norms. And a new economic relief legislation called the HEROES Act, which passed in the House, aims to send another round of stimulus payments to families. That would provide $1,200 per adult, but also $1,200 for each dependent. And it would be a bump from the $500 parents received for each of their dependent children who qualified under the CARES Act. As Amy Hanauer, executive director of the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy, says under the first stimulus bill, children 16 and older were excluded. But that would change with the HEROES Act. It would include adult dependents, and it would include immigrants who file their taxes with a tax ID number. And single parents would also receive more money. Under the last round, if you were a single parent with two children, you would have gotten less than two parents with one child. That didn't make a lot of sense. If it passes in the Senate, President Donald Trump would have to sign the act into law. But Hanauer says Trump is signaling he is interested in a different plan. He wants to like zero out business expenses at, at hotels and restaurants and entertainment. Um, these aren't necessarily nearly as well targeted toward working people and working families as the HEROES Act would be. And while Washington decides how to move forward, Melinda Caraballo is hoping it would lead to another round of stimulus money. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, just maintaining, you know, having those additional resources for the kids. Jaima Crespo, NBC10 Responds. NBC10 Responds will continue bringing you all of the new developments about unemployment and the economic relief payments. Visit the response section of the free NBC10 app. You can find all of the stories from this special report.